Good afternoon, and what I have for you here is a little bit of guidance for how we are going to approach beginning our IA process for History of the Americas this year. Now, earlier in the year, and, and it's been my, my plan the entire year, basically, to, um, uh, to try my best to get us going on this IA process and to give us uh, an opportunity to get as much of it done. Um, with the way they have redone the calendar now, of course, us losing a week uh, with the extended spring break for us to get ready for virtual learning. Um, and now um, with the strictures they put on the end of the year, um, obviously because they want our grades to be really solid by the 8th so you guys can make a decision, uh, your best decision about how you want your uh, grade displayed, um, that kind of cuts down on two more weeks, essentially, of what we could have used as functional IA preparation time. So when we look at the entire uh, calendar, we've lost three functional weeks of dealing with the IA process, which is not helpful. But one of the things that we will do is I, the best way we can use the remainder of the time that we have um, is uh, for you to begin thinking about the process and hopefully by the time the eighth run uh, comes around because that's when we have to basically say you know I can't assume uh, you will give me anything new after that which is of course uh, will be um, not uh, it would be what uh, just seven eight nine days from today essentially um, is I want you to have maybe a good workable question planned out. Because what you'll find is that when trying to do the internal assessment for history, a good question guides the entire process and makes it a lot easier. So, okay, well, one of the first things we need to do in determining what you want to do for your IA is, of course, what is the IA in general? If you've had a chance to look over these documents that I posted last week, great. If not, it's no big deal. But... Um, you'll, you'll see in the subject guide that I posted in last week, um, in the, the preview here that you get from, and I'll just make this bigger, um, the PDF preview, and that's not how I want it. Let's see, view, uh, bookmarks, no, I want to continue a scroll. Yeah, that's what I want. Anyway, so the IA section of that document starts on page 83 of the document, you see right there. Um, and what you will see is it is basically an historical investigation. Okay? So, well, what does that mean? Basically, the idea is you pick a historical question that you would like to answer, something you're interested in, something you're curious about. And then what you do is you take that question that you formulate and then you do research to answer that question, you know, primary sources, academic secondaries, that kind of stuff. And then you present those findings after looking at, at those sources, you analyze the sources and you use those sources to come to a conclusion, to answer the question. That is essentially what the IA is. So basically the types of assessments we've been doing all year, when I have you write a paper, when I'll, I'll have you answer a question like, you know, um, you know, how did this lead to that or, or, or you know, the, the different causes for the civil rights movement or how did, and then you guys kind of look into it and you answer things like, well, you know, here's how slavery impacted um, the civil rights movement. Here's how the Great Depression helped lead to this, that, or the other. You know, the th types of things you've been doing all year on your assessment questions are kind of the types of questions you would want to do an, an, an historical investigation on. Now, as far as guidance and what I'm supposed to help you with, I'm supposed to help you through this process. I, my job is not to come up with a question. That's your job. Um, my job is to give you guidance as you go through it. Um, I can give you feedback on what I think would a, a good question would be. Is this a good doable question? So on and so forth. Um, and what you'll do is, is there are three basic parts to the IA, the identification and evaluation of sources, 
hey, that sounds familiar. It's like our good friend Standard B, you know, where you did OPCVL type stuff. You'll do that. There's the actual investigation, which is the written out. Here's the question. Here's my evidence that I found, my research. Here's the answer to the question. And then there'll be a reflection piece. Uh, so there'll be three overall questions. Um, but like I said, the biggest part of it is what's your question going to be? And I can walk you through the rest of the um, the rest of the process, but what you will find is the total word count that includes your identification, evaluation of sources, your actual investigation, and your reflection are supposed to be no more than 2,200 words total. So this isn't really all that terribly long, okay? And this is giving you some suggested guidance as to how many words to put in each section. Well, if the investigation itself is only supposed to be around 1,300 words, you need a question, okay, that is narrow enough to answer in that number of words, to present your evidence and answer the question. So it needs to be narrow enough where you're not trying to do something massive like, you know, uh, you're not going to try to, you know, disprove or prove like the Kennedy assassination. I mean, you can't do it in, in that word count. Don't do anything like, you know, conspiracy theories or anything like that because it can't be done in the word count. It just can't. So it can't be a huge question. Um, I want to give you a little bit of guidance on what to do with it. Nope, that's not what I want. There's that. Uh, where are the... That's, that wasn't the part I wanted to... Okay. Um, no, that's not the part I wanted. Okay, so like just, just to give you an example of questions, historical investigations. Uh, like, like what kind of questions are we looking at? What kind of narrow scope are we looking for? Okay, here's a good example. How systematic were the deportations of the Jewish population of Dusseldorf to Minsk between 1941 and 42? It is a narrow question. It's specific, and um, it can be done in that word count. But notice, these questions are not yes-no questions. They're not what you would call obvious answers. Like, here's another one. How significant were economic problems as a cause of the Bamberg witch trials? How significant? Evaluate that kind of stuff because it's, it's an arguable question, right? What were the most important reasons for the failure of Operation Market Garden? It's not just um, what are the reasons, you know, and let me list them out. That's a report. This is answering a question. I have a question about this. Hmm. The more I look at this topic, wow, that's interesting. I wonder how this happened. I wonder how this one thing impacted this part over here. Um, and so why these are why these are some good examples of good questions or that type of question is what you're looking for. You know, to what extent was weak leadership responsible for the collapse of Egypt, the Egyptian Old Kingdom in 2125 BC? See, these are not yes/no questions. These are not, um, you know, uh, questions that are have obvious answers. These are analytical questions. Well, how much did this play a role? Uh, why was it like this instead of that? How significant was this? Um, and so if you're sitting there going, well, okay, that's great. What are the other restrictions? Because I've got all kinds of things I'm interested in. Well, the great thing about the IA is you are allowed to choose whatever question you want, as long as it is somehow related to history. That means it doesn't even have to be related to history of the Americas. It can have, it can be about anything in all of human history. So this should be good. So if you're, I would suggest creating a question based on the history of a topic of something that you're already interested in. If you're really interested in music, find a way to make your question about music or this piece or this person and the impact they had on something. If it's engineering and you're fascinated about engineering, cool. Find a question, create a question dealing with some aspect of engineering, um, some project that was done 
some uh, advancement that was made and how it impacted something later on. Um, a, a certain engineer and their techniques and how it impacted something later. Uh, fashion, I don't care. I mean, you could come up with anything. Um, that's a blessing and a curse. Sometimes people then are saying, well, where do I even start? I say start with what you're already interested in and help narrow down a question. Another great place um, that I would look, because right now, as far as the IA process, because we are so um, crunched for time now at, at this point in, in the year, I'm just hoping to help you come up with a decent, workable question by the 8th. All right, that's really what I'm, at this point, all we can really hope to do with our remaining time is to give you that time for you to just look through stuff, ask yourself questions about, hmm, why do I, you know, how can I do, come up with this question? And I'll have some specific things that you can walk through over the next week or, or nine days or so to help get you to that process. But that is the goal. Um, something else that I noticed to maybe help you out with this is uh, when you're doing your readings, right? Let me come back here. Actually, no, I'm going to bring this down, bring that down for you. And I'm actually going to come over here. I'm going to come back to here. Oh, let's hopefully there's nothing there that shouldn't be. Let me see that. No, nope. no. Nope. <laughs> All right. No, that's not the one I want either. Oh, here it is. Actually, oh, I look at these 900 tabs I have open. Here we go. Okay, Civil Rights in the Americas text. Uh, one of the things that I hope you have noticed as you've been doing your reading, when you read through a given chapter, right? Uh, let me just scroll here, all right? Uh, no, we don't care about that. We're not going to worry about that. That's just about the book. All right, so indigenous populations in Latin America. Let's, let's say you're really interested in that, the indigenous people in Latin America. Have you noticed that when you do your reading, at the beginning of any of the chapters that we've had to do reading on, look here. Look. Look at these questions that they pose at the beginning of the, of the chapter. How and to what extent did the indigenous population of Latin America achieve equality after 1945? How and to what extent did Native Americans achieve equality in the U.S. after 45? How and to what extent did the First Peoples achieve equality in Canada after 1945? Think about that. Those are excellent starting points for an IA question. Now, I'll be honest, with 1,300 words total for the investigation portion, you might have to then narrow it further down and say, maybe how did this particular um, event in Native American you know, history help them achieve equality in the U.S. after 45, or how did this particular movement that developed or how did this particular um, uh, leader help them achieve equality? You know, it might need to be boiled down further, but these are great um, starting points. If you're just really scratching your head going, I have no idea. Um, if you are interested in some of these topics of the things that, from the Americas uh, that we have, have looked at, particularly um, with these aspects with rights uh, civil rights and things of that nature. I mean, each chapter starts with questions that could be further narrowed down just slightly to an excellent IA question. So I would say go to any of the texts that we have looked at, uh, the World War II and the Americas texts, uh, this one that we've been using to do our notes um, um, and during virtual learning, or the um, Great Depression in the Americas, and see if if uh, as you read through, you're not kind of given some ideas. Oh, wow. Yeah, that actually would be a great question. Um, so as far as our IA process for this year, question selection and trying to narrow down a good doable question um, is, is going to be our number one task. I think that's just as much as we can really hope to get done um, with the new restrictions on our time that we've been given here. So what I'm going to do is I want you to, to obviously you'll take a look at this, uh, start thinking. You might already have a topic you know you're interested in and it ha doesn't have to have anything to do with the Americas. It can be, uh, it can deal with the Holocaust. It can deal with, um, you know, you know uh, the Protestant Reformation. You know, it, it doesn't matter anything at all. 
Um, my job is to help you walk through that process. And what I'm going to do is I'll post up a couple of activities that you'll walk yourself through basically. Um, I'll post those up uh, tomorrow or Friday once I get those finished nailing those down. And, um, and that's what you'll walk through as the last thing that you'll give me this year to set yourself up to be in a good position so that as soon as we come back senior year, whether you have me or Ms. Fellini or however they split classes next year, uh, you will be ready to rock and roll and get this process done as soon as possible so that your senior year can, uh, you can get that kind of off your shoulders as soon as you can uh, at the beginning of senior year. All right, that's just to give you an idea of what's coming and what we're doing over the next kind of the next week. And uh, so so start thinking. I'll have those 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 tasks associated with it posted up for you um, tomorrow and Friday. And uh, keep an eye open. Start thinking.